Earlier on, we had a chance to walk around the Eco Village at Ithaca with one of its co founders, Liz Walker. The Eco Village at Ithaca consists of three distinct neighborhoods Frog, Song, and Tree, which were each constructed at different times. Though we had an opportunity to peek into Liz's home in Frog, we wanted to check out more spaces. So Dave McCobb let us tour his quirky cabin in the Song neighborhood. Now he wasn't around when we were visiting, so his friend Francis and one of his tenants, Kat, graciously showed us around. I've lived here for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. My profession is actually engineering, so I'm very interested in like the energy efficiency aspect of the Eco Village community. And I teach in the engineering college at Cornell. They probably re really rely on your expertise here at the Eco Village. Yeah, yeah, I'm involved in a, like a bunch of different uh, projects. So one of the things I do is every five years, we do like a survey of all our energy consumption and, and how much gas, how much electricity we're using and try to learn about what we're doing. And then there's just like constantly kind of conversations about like how to make it more energy efficient or bring in new technology. And we're standing now in the Song neighborhood. Yeah. And this is not your home, but your, your friend's home, right? Yeah, Dave McCobb. Yeah. yeah. So we built the neighborhood together, like Dave, myself, many other of the original members of the community. And But you had the opportunity to like really personalize it. So if you look around, I mean, Dave is just like really, <laughs> he's really gone to town and he made a life work here out of yeah. being a really, really energy efficient house, but also like yeah. very beautiful with a lot yeah, of like- Yeah, it's very quirky, yeah, you know? Yeah, quirky and a lot of like really interesting wooden details. It's both of those things. Yeah, I mean, look at the handles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like all these wood. like, you know, taking getting some branches and yeah. then like cutting them in the right shape and making these cool little handles. And they're all unique. So Kat is yeah. here. What are some of the favorite aspects that you like about Dave's house that I, you really think are endearing? You know, it's funny because whenever he first showed me the place and said, you know, you, know, you could stay here for a while, and I thought, I walked in, and I'm like, this is just like, such a, it doesn't feel like a house. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but then I spent the night, I said, well, just try it out. You know, yeah. So I spent the night here, and I just woke up, and I was just so at peace. You know, So I feel like... Like the combination of the plants and all of the wood and all of the handmade aspects, mm -hmm. and of course the light and the views, yeah. just are so awesome, you know. And so it just makes you feel at peace in your body and your mind, you know. Yeah. Um, I like to call it an eco psychological experiment <laughs> because it really does kind of help you connect with the natural world. Yeah. And I truly have days where I forget that I haven't been outside yet because right. I'm so like connected to it. Yeah. So it's, it's really got a very magical quality to you it. Could, you could even, if you wanted to, you could take the, these shades, move yeah. them, and sunbathe right there. <laughs> you, actually, you totally could. Sunbathe yeah, totally in the winter. Could. Yeah, it's magnificent. And yeah. I think the other things, I love the kitchen. You know, yeah. it's not a lot of counter space exactly, but then when you start to see this as your countertop as well as your sink. Right, so it's not just know? about this butcher block yeah. here. It's really it's efficient, you yeah. know, because you're over here and you're rinsing and then you don't have to make a mess and you can chop and then, I mean, I of never course, the thought compost. about that. Yeah. Like yeah. had the whole like the whole yeah, sleeping thing to clean like and it. yeah it's yeah and then whenever you wash your dishes yeah. you just take out this little guy right Perfect. and you wash your dishes you yeah. rinse and then you put your dishes away right up there and you're you're done and they're drying no, yeah, actually they're drying. this is a drying rack but a place that you put your away. dishes. Right? Sandra, you really love that efficiency. It's don't very you? Like efficient. This yeah, you know, and the fact that everything's open. You know, somebody who doesn't live here, and we do sometimes Airbnb the place, somebody yeah. who doesn't live here can find what they need, you know. Right, because it's, like, it's all dishes, open. Here's the yeah. you know, jars and stuff. So The compost thing And is the compost just is, you know, amazing. it just tickles me. It's like one of the first things I show people when they come in because, <laughs> I again, like one of the reasons it tickles me is that as um, – a psychologist who studies conservation behavior, mm -hmm. like why do we do, why do we choose to be more sustainable? And we know we're such a culture of convenience. Mm. So things have to be convenient. You have to like take away the barriers, right? And Dave has taken away the barrier and made it even fun to mm -hmm. compost, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I like that. What happens to the compost yeah. afterwards? Like where, where um, do you guys take it? So the when the village? compost is done, we just take it off the little hook here. 
like so. And it's a little stinky right now, so I'm gonna take <laughs> a it out. A lot off. of banana peels. And of course, Dave has, you know, rigged the contraption so the Velcro <laughs> lid comes off. And then um, there is, each quad in the neighborhood has its own composting center. Yeah. And fortunately, ours is just right back out here. Oh, so wow, I just walk great. it out in the back and yeah. put it in. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's really great. Very easy. It may not be my taste or my style, but I do like how he's so quirky with the iron rot. You yeah. know, the handmade iron rot edges and the hardware and everything along those lines. Like, just like the twigs and yes. the branches for I like locks. Him. I know. I, everything he just says, I think his mind, he's such an inventor that he just questions, why would we do it that way when I could just do it this way myself? Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, there's so many branches and twigs for handles. The windows are, I think, really, they work really well. They're really easy to use and they're mm. beautiful. Yeah. You know? So, and, oh, on, yeah. and a cold day like today, it was so hot in here earlier, I had yeah. to open this up just to cool the place down. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he worked with a, there's a metal worker out in Mecklenburg who did all the iron work. I like that it's so local, this and I is, love these yeah. chairs. They're so cute. It's interesting you mentioned that. He was telling me about the wood. This is not chestnut. It use it for they use it for guitars a lot. Oh, Delbert, uh, yeah. rosewood. 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 Yeah. 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 So maybe that's why they put the yeah. I don't know if that's a rose, but yeah, these are rosewood. He was yeah. telling me about that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, members of that family that are endangered, or you can only use them somewhat because they have such a uh, they're, they're dense woods, you mm -hmm. know, to work with. And a, a lot of things for instrument parts and everything are, are made for that. So it's a very yeah. like, highly coveted wood. Yeah. I love it. It's just like all the little details. And like you said, the plants, mm -hmm. I was even joking with like the I plants know. coming out of this I know. edge area right here. There's all these little discoveries. And yeah. honestly, it took me a while to, I think I, I, I started wondering, like, what have I missed? You know, when I was mm -hmm. living in here at first, mm -hmm. what have I missed? There's probably some, you know, little door that opens to something, a trap door. <laughs> but yeah, he's got lots of little, <laughs> I, know. I know, like there's all, there's just always little features. And and he keeps going with it. You know, he yeah. comes back and he gets going on a project. What were some of the principles of the Song House? Because I know this is unique from like the other homes that are in the song neighborhood, right? So he customized his a little bit more. Yeah. But were yeah. there certain like energy requirements or things that he had to, to adhere to to the actual neighborhood? Well, yeah, one thing is they're all um, Energy Star houses. So okay. like the US Environmental Protection Agency has this standard called Energy Star. And to meet it, you have to m meet a certain level of energy efficiency and have enough like energy efficient appliances and lighting and things like that. So. All of them met that requirement, and then even though you can't see it, like uh, there, a lot of the the building materials are standard from um, across the houses. So if you were to go behind these walls, what you would see is something called a, a structural insulated panel. That's like an Oreo cookie with um, uh, the filling on the inside is the insulation, and on the outside you have um, a kind of strong plywood called uh, oriented strand board that hmm. um, that supports the weight of the house. And then, um, so that would be like all, like wherever you see walls in this house, that's what's there. Uh, but then you can see how he's really added a real personal touch by adding this very kind of nice, um, uh, looks like a plaster that's, you know, painted yeah. uh, beautiful colors. And then yeah. you've got the, the inside here, all this um, uh, post and beam woodwork, to, that's the kind of the frame of the house. So yeah. it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a timber frame it is. house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's really, it is really um, energy efficient. The, the walls are really um, uh, energy efficient as well. Yeah. And so did he build this or did you build it with him? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the so the building of it, we were all building these houses at the same time over a course of roughly three years. But sometimes there would be like a project like... Dave wanted to get some big piece of work done, and we would all like jump in and, and come over to his house and like all work together. And you know, some of it might be you know not terribly like high end. You know, like I I, I don't know how to make one of those you yeah. know, beautiful pieces of wood, but yeah. you can imagine there's like there's other kinds of jobs that yeah you just you get a you get a bunch of people together. It was, yeah, it was a really nice like kind of community building aspect of, of building the neighborhood that we right. worked together on. That. Yeah, 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 of yeah. course, that sounds like a, I guess that's part of the beauty of like building so closely together. Yeah, you know, yeah, as yeah, yeah. things are going up. Right, right, and, right. Um, as we were chatting with Liz, she was saying like a lot of these were going up all at once because yep. you get the benefit of like 
buying the windows and doors in bulk yeah, exactly, and all those other types exactly. of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or somebody might figure out, hey, here's a good lead on some low cost, uh, energy efficient lighting. And then we all like jump in there and get our lights from that place. And yeah. it just saves us all a bunch of money. Yeah. yeah now yeah. I see you have these large windows here yep. also on, in, in Frog, which is the first neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, they had this passive solar element, and I guess here in Song, then you have this passive solar element yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, and he's so so. Dave uh, again, he's like he uh, because you had a lot of latitude in this house or in these houses to kind of personalize it and design it in the way you wanted. So he really, um, you know, did a lot of glass here. So and this is kind of the perfect day for it. It's yeah. uh, it's like ten degrees outside, <laughs> but really sunny, and the the sun is bouncing off the snow and, you know, coming into the house. And it's and, 80 and degrees It's 80 here. degrees here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. a greenhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so why was it that you could personalize these homes in Song so much compared to maybe the neighborhood in Frog, even though that was before your time? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, I don't know if you mm -hmm. know the answer to that. The approaches we took was to say, if we give people the option, like if they want to kind of customize it more, that will open this neighborhood up to people who otherwise might not be interested in joining. So if we were restrictive and said it, everybody has to be built the exact same way and you have to use these materials, as you can imagine, somebody like Dave would not have probably gone for that. But, yeah. but what we ended up with um, instead was, so we had some default materials uh, to make it easier for people to um, if, build a certain way and like in a kind of um, systematic way to, to, to uh, not to like be overwhelmed by having to make so many decisions. Mm -hmm. But you had the option if you wanted to do your own thing more to customize it more, you could do that. But then it was up to you to figure out, you know, like Dave had to figure out where's the where am I going to get these, you know, eight by eight posts and so on. Right. There wasn't like yeah. a kind of a supply chain <laughs> yeah. to, to, to know exactly what would what would come in. You'd have yeah. to probably pay more yeah. Because you're sourcing materials yeah, yeah, yeah. that were more yeah. customizable. Right. Yeah. What are some of the other energy efficient aspects of this house? Uh, in terms of like heating, along with the the the, the passive solar, you also have um, a heat pump, uh, an air source heat pump. Uh, and in fact, if we look over there, you can see that that white box oh, on the yeah. wall. Okay. So that is, I know that this sounds like counterintuitive or strange, but you can actually take heat from the outdoors mm -hmm. and pump it into the house. It, you might think, oh, there, there can't be heat in the cold air outside, but actually there is like thermal energy in it. It's like uh, a mini split unit. It's a mini yeah. split, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, a, it's the same principle as your refrigerator in your kitchen, like takes heat out of the cold inside the refrigerator and pushes it out into the warm um, kitchen. So here, uh, we, we want the heat inside, and so it's just like, it's taking the heat from the cold air outside and pushing it in. So They've so, become very effective, because yes, I was looking into yes. them recently, and they were trialing them in like 30 degree below temperature yeah, in North yeah. Dakota, yeah, yeah, and yeah. some of them were yeah. performing fairly well. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> so that's been a, a, like a big innovation. In fact, that's, that's like in the 20 years that the neighborhood's been here, like mm -hmm. when we first built, that wasn't, that wasn't a possibility, but over time, the, the, the technology's gotten better and better, and it can work in this climate, and you know, more and more people in the neighborhood have them. Yeah, and from what I understand is they work really well if your house is well insulated. If you're in a brick old drafty yeah. building, it's going to be really hard to use those to heat your house. Yeah, you definitely you want to you, you want to have an insulated house to, to right. begin with. Yeah, so so um, uh, but that's that is a good point about the neighborhood by starting out with these energy efficient uh, energy star houses. You know, you, you're on a good foundation. Yeah. It and looks it, like he has different energy sources, though, too, because then you have a, 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 a wood stove here. It actually, it looks like a wood stove. It's got a fake. It's got a fake. It's actually, it is, it's natural gas. Yeah, so, okay. so, so if you, uh, you can um, supplement the, the heat from the air source heat pump with, with, with natural gas. Okay. But by adding the, the um, air source heat pump, the mini split, he has reduced how much natural gas he needs. So that's yeah. kind of the direction we're going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in Tree, the next community over, they don't even have any natural that's gas. That's right. Correct? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's so yeah. they took the took the next step. But uh, there's a, a clever adage: don't make heat, move heat. So <laughs> <laughs> so you like you move the heat from the outside in instead yeah. of like burning natural gas to make heat. Yeah. Sorry about that. that actually yeah. makes the yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes so a lot that's of kind sense. of the that's kind of the direction things are going. So what are some of the other elements of this house? Because I see this is like a two floors. Yeah, you know, or three yeah. floors, sure, really. Three there's floors, like... right. So there's a loft up there. Wow. Uh, so then you've got a lower level down here. And I mean, the nice thing is that the light like penetrates in and can really heat up the whole the whole space. Yeah. But then also, you'll, you'll also notice like he'll, he'll have um, like some, some windows as well. So, you know, maybe 
it's getting too warm in here, you, you want to like keep a little cooler in yeah. there or also to keep sound out. So yeah. you, maybe you can keep that space a little quieter by shutting the windows up there. And then we've got, you know, we've got windows down here. And these look like all like cast iron. This looks like something that was handmade. Dave didn't do that himself. I think he's really done a lot of the woodwork, but then he worked with a, an iron worker to make mm -hmm. those elements. But uh, oh, yeah, little clothing line here. Right, right, yeah. right. So because it's warm down here, you know, you can yeah, you yeah. can dry. You can. We got a towel hanging up. Yeah. Over there. <laughs> sure. A, oh, um, radiant floor. Is, radiant floor. I feel it yeah, underneath yeah, my feet. Yeah, and so I don't know if that's like working right now, but that yeah. um, uh, especially because before there was the mini split, so that mm -hmm. you needed uh, a mixture of different um, uh, natural gas sources. So, mm -hmm. so the way that works is we're on the natural gas grid. It comes into the neighborhood, and then he'll somewhere he'll have like a uh, a boiler that will make his hot water and also his um, uh, the hot water that goes into the radiant floor. And that's mm -hmm. how he heats it. Hmm. Oh, and then I'm forgetting it. Also, uh, I mean, we can't see it here right now, but on the outside, he has his solar panels. So this, uh, so some fraction of the electricity comes from hmm. comes from solar panels. And is it just his solar panels, or is he hooked up into a the, a larger solar panel that's on um, in the in the neighborhood or not? Oh yeah, that's a good question. So in our neighborhood, everybody has, the, the people that have solar photovoltaic for electricity mm -hmm. all have their own. The other neighborhoods have some of those big arrays that you see where they, they are making the solar electricity collectively and then mm -hmm. spreading it out to a bunch of different houses. But yeah. here it's all uh, on your own. And so that was up to the owner whether to install them or not. So okay. a lot of them, not every house, but I would say probably the majority of the 30 houses now have, have uh, solar panels on the okay. roof. And, yeah. and in your own house, obviously not this one, but in your own house, how does your energy bill split with the solar panels that you have? We make about 70% of our electricity across the year from, from solar panels. Fascinating. Yeah. And so we, what's your electricity bill, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, it works, it's like averages $20 a month for electricity. Wow, that's crazy. So, so it's really, and electricity is usually really expensive. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. But, <laughs> we're, but if you're making most of it, you're um, making it yeah, yeah at least you, have to, you have to pay a, a hookup fee. So in a given month, even if you don't buy any electricity mm -hmm. from the, the grid, you, you still have to pay the, the fee to be connected to them. Uh, but then the other thing we have is, is net metering. So we, uh, and probably Dave and a lot of the houses here will make extra electricity in the summer months mm -hmm. more than they need and then they get credit for that and then in the winter when they're um uh you're not making as much electricity in fact today a lot of these houses are not making any because they have a foot of snow, snow on, top yeah, of the, on their solar panels i almost call them snowler panels <laughs> yeah, yeah, like snow panels <laughs> um yeah so they uh uh so then you get so then like you can use those credits in that, that time of year i that see year. okay yeah. awesome yeah here we go Okay. Oh, yeah, here we go. go. All right. Right. So uh, so here we have, in terms of utilities, this is the, the inverter. Um, so what's happening here is if there is power coming from the roof, it's not clear to me that there is because, because of the snow. But even, yeah. um, even with snow, like if it's, par if it's partly exposed, it'll start making at least some electricity. And maybe yeah. that's what's going on with this green light. But anyway... So it would come in here as direct current to the inverter, and then the inverter makes it into alternating current, which is what you need uh, to, you know, out of your, your, your wall outlets to run all your appliances and so on. Um, but then it also has a, a safety feature, which is before it comes into the house, it goes out and there's like an outside shutoff box so that if, the, if there's an emergency and the utility needs to work on it, they can come there and, and turn it off so that they want to electrocute themselves mm -hmm. when they're working on it, which is, of course, very important. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the electricity gets mixed with the um, electricity from the, the grid and goes to his um, breaker panel over yeah. there. It's like a little workshop in here, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, well, you, yeah, you saw all the stuff that he's, he's built, so you can yeah. imagine, you know, he's got, he needs to have a full uh, workshop to do that, and that's what he's got, yep. Cool. And he's got the little little eyebrow windows in the in the back, which I yeah. think is nice because then you have like light from from just both sides. a little bit of light yeah. that comes through. Yeah. 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 Yep. So you yeah. don't feel like you're totally in a cave. Okay, yep. we'll walk out yep. here, and you can see some of the the close ups on the plaster walls out here. Yeah. So one of the things we did to save cost is this house. It has a neighbor duplexed house. So um, through that wall is uh, Elon and Rachel Shapiro's house. And that is another energy efficient aspect of this neighborhood, that all the, all the structures have two households in them. So that means first you, sh you, you share the wall so you don't have to build an outside wall, and that, that saves costs. But then not only that, then 
that wall is not exposed to the outside elements, and so you don't lose heat through that wall. Right, so you have like three walls, essentially, yeah, 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 that, as opposed to four. Four, exactly. And then um, how thick are those walls even between the next house over? Oh, okay, so there, so that's where fi like the fire safety comes in. Yeah. This is interesting. That um, it's not so much about insulation like to the outside wall, but rather to have a wall that won't allow, like if there was a fire on this side of the house, that of the fire, um, according to code, has to maybe, it ha would have to take 30 minutes to burn its way through the wall to mm -hmm. the other side. I mean, we're kind of getting into a little dismal area. Yeah. Here, but, yeah. but, um, but that's, you know, you have to think about that. And so that, that is something that like the building inspector actually mm -hmm. looks for and verifies that mm -hmm. that's so, there's a so-called, um, uh, a firewall. What's that, the R value of some of the insulation, the insulative walls that you were mentioning? Do you know? Uh, I think it's like R, in this, it's like R30 wall and R50 in the ceiling. And okay. then I believe the, the tree, the passive house, like even, yeah. it's like R50 I, wall. I think R52 or something I R52 saw. R52 wall and like yeah. R90. Attic. Which is insane. Yeah, That's it's so very, buttoned very, up. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. And then this is like a little, oh, like a, it looks like a, Massage bench. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like it's a yeah, little like a kitchen, like oh, yeah. so you could have kind of a, a B and B. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, the so that's kind of been become a bit of a, a cottage industry. Yeah. Uh, in Eco Village, people will have like run a little Airbnb out of their out of their house, a small kitchen with a sink and a little refrigerator. And I so see on. he has a lot of Gordlandia lamps. Right. Yep. Yeah. All made out of gourds. Big yeah, supporter of Gordlandia. <laughs> I wonder if you counted all the gourds, you know, how many there would be like twenty or thirty I of these all together. It's a lot. Well, yeah, people yeah. could see our Gordlandia episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Is it possible to go up there? Yeah, is sure. It, do you want to, me to go up first? Or do you want to? It uh, doesn't matter. I okay. could, yeah, yeah Sonder can even go up. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a big house. Yeah, yeah, I was mentioning to you before how the, like you had a lot of opportunity to customize the house, but one thing about it was to, to have like the, the form of the neighborhood that we wanted where yeah. the, People would have a little space between houses, and like when you go outside there, there's a kind of open space in the middle. But we didn't just want people randomly throwing down houses all over the place, and and that and that meant like limiting the footprint. So none of the houses are more than 24 feet wide or 36 feet long, hmm. and then I think it's like 32 feet to the top. Hmm. Okay. So that you can't build a hundred foot skyscraper because right. <laughs> it just like it would you know the it feel would be, of it, yeah. it would be yeah, it would totally be weird. Off. So like everybody had to work within that space. So, you know, Dave, that, like everybody else was presented, okay, that's the maximum size and you mm -hmm. get to work within that space to decide kind of how you want to design the house. Mm -hmm. I love right. all the, you know, the, the wooden detailing. Yeah, here yeah, and How they yeah. just kind of fit in and... Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, like a Scandinavian beans. or a yeah. chalet or something like that. Yeah. It's got that, that really nice wooden, wooden feel. So it's really cool. great because it's not, it's not serving as the main structure of the house you yeah have these energy yeah. efficient or this really efficient system to build the house but then you do use this as a decorative element which right preserves the wood also for right. a very mm -hmm. long time right mm -hmm. right right yeah like the quality of this house is, is not going to degrade as easily yeah 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 and especially he's just put so much love into it you know i'm sure he's going to like take really really good care of yeah. it yeah did you end up customizing your house or? Is, we yeah. did. When the neighborhood was first planned, they did work with an architect to come up with like some general plans that were offered. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't want to customize it, you you could take one of those plans. There's, there's one called a duet and one called a trio. And a trio is a little bigger than a, a, a duet. And so if you, if you look around outside, you'll see that like some of them follow that certain pattern. But ours is basically a, a big rectangular box, but then inside it, we, we, um, we like, kind of laid it out how we wanted to. Mm -hmm. While you're up here, do you want to like look in the, uh, some of the other? Oh so yeah, kind of, oh my yeah, God, little I love the little toilet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, that's for bringing your, your suitcase up. So if you, Oh my <laughs> gosh. Because <laughs> it's a little, hard, a little awkward to like pull it up this yeah. uh, very steep staircase. Yeah, that's and then so oh, and then the other thing is there's even like a little, another little loft up here. So there's a little- Oh amazing. really? Yeah, oh, that's so really funny, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really fun. This is like lofted out. It's like a loft on top of a loft. Yeah. He's really been clever with all the different bedrooms here. Yeah. So 10% of our Google AdSense proceeds are being directly reinvested back into the Finger Lakes community. And they are also being matched by our partners at Espoma Organic. So by subscribing, watching, and liking this channel, you're helping the community here. We'll see you in the next video.